Many people still consider the American colonies to be the clear underdog of the American Revolution. The British had the strongest military of the 18th century and clearly outnumbered the, out the untrained colonists, but these American patriots used other tactics to turn the tide of the war. While most believe the war was won solely through guerrilla warfare tactics and a little bit of luck, most Americans are not aware of one of the war's most important influences, the cult perspiring. This group was George Washington's personal band of spies and his leading source of intelligence throughout the later years of the Revolution. During the British occupation of Boston, the Continental Army was able to gain support of the people of Boston. These people were in support of the revolutionary cause, so they were willing to gain intelligence for Washington and his men. But then when you go to New York, you see that there's mainly a loyalist population, so it was difficult for this to happen. Because of this, the British were able to easily drive out the Continental Army from New York and New Jersey, and they set up a military base of operations. From this military base of operations came Washington's need to smuggle information from New York to the Continental Army in order to better help the situation. People don't know about the cult of firing today in America, but despite this, it was actually one of the most important pieces of the American Revolution and was decisive in America's victory. The past few years have been littered with unsuccessful campaigns and dreary winters for the Continental Army. General Washington has grown tired of the slow, inaccurate scouting operations that our army has been conducting. He decided to turn, instead, to relying on civilians to gather intelligence on the bloody backs. You see, a soldier has so much discipline drilled into him that he is easy to spot, but a civilian, a civilian can hide in plain sight. That's where I come in. Washington did not achieve success in his reign alone, and many close friends of his played roles in the proceedings of operations across New York. My name is Benjamin Talmadge. After I graduated from Yale in 1776, I was commissioned into the Continental Army. Originally, I was a major in the 2nd Continental Light Dragoons. However, the Commander-in-Chief soon promoted me to Lieutenant Colonel and made me his Chief of Intelligence. I was tasked with gathering a small group of trustworthy individuals whom could gather and transport information, specifically in the New York area. I started with some old boyhood friends of mine from Setauket, Long Island, including Anna Strong, Caleb Brewster, and Abraham Woodhull. However, we soon expanded the ring into York City. I am Abraham Woodhull, boyhood friend of Ben Talmadge and a key player in the Culper spy ring. Benny approached me in August of 1778 with an offer to spy for the paper trick cause. I had been captured as a smuggler, and Talmadge offered me a way out if I were to help him, so really, I had little choice in the matter. I began spying in October 1778, when Benny became the Chief of Intelligence. I travelled to New York City regularly to collect information and made observations on Long Island. An important piece of the operation was the route that was utilized in order to transfer important intel between Washington, Talmadge, and other spies. We have a very intricate system for transporting intelligence, and although every operation is a little bit different, it goes something like this. My man in New York City is a shop owner by the name of Robert Townsend. Austin Rowe will go into Townsend's shop and request a package for John Bolton, which is my code name. Rowe will then take the package, ride 110 miles to Setauket, at which point he will drop it off in a prearranged drop box for Abraham Woodhull. Woodhull then picks up the package, adds his own intelligence and observations. Then Anna Strong will hand a black petticoat, which will sim symbolize that there is information ready to be picked up. In addition, she would also hang a series of handkerchiefs on her clothesline. The number of handkerchiefs symbolizes the spot at which Woodhull and Caleb Brewster will meet up. Then Woodhull and Brewster meet. Caleb takes the letter, rides across the bay to Connecticut, at which point he meets with me. I then use my dragoons, posted every 15 miles, to get the letter back to Washington. Participating in the ring gave average people an opportunity to assist in the pursuit of American independence, but they also ran the risk of capture by the British and punishments as severe as life-threatening torture methods and hangings. Although this was the case, many American patriots were still willing to throw caution to the wind and oppose the British for the freedom they deserved. We take every precaution that we can to keep both our intelligence and our agents out of enemy hands. Everyone in the ring has a code name. For example, Abraham Woodhull is known as Samuel Culper and Robert Townsend is known as Culpa Jr. General Washington himself derived the name from Culpa County, Virginia, where he used to be a land surveyor. In addition, we also write in code, so that way, even if the enemy were to get their hands on a letter that we've written, they would not be able to decipher it. We use a code book in which every agent in numerous words that may come up are assigned a number. For example, Washington is agent 711. In addition, we have used invisible ink to hide our message in innocent sheet music or personal letters. No one can read it without the proper reagents. So you have members of the ring using this invisible ink, which was actually a substance called gallic acid. This was invented by uh, Sir James Jay, who was actually the brother of John Jay. But essentially you would write the letters with this ink, and then you would take an iron sulfate, 
sprinkle it over the letter, and then it would reveal what they wrote underneath. So this was effectively used in seemingly normal correspondences to send hidden messages between members with certain information and intel. Written letters were Washington's main form of communication to faraway members of the Cope Perspiring. Through these letters, Washington was able to keep track of British movements and maintain a current status with Ben Talmadge and others. So Washington writes a letter to Benjamin Talmadge regarding plans to conduct reconnaissance in Long Island. He talks about how the success of the whole group relies heavily on, and I quote, knowledge of the exact situation of the enemy. In addition, he also reminds Talmadge about how absolute secrecy is absolutely necessary in the whole affair. This seems to reveal the immense confidence that Washington has in his group of spies. He sees their significance toward not only the campaign in New York, but by referring to the entire whole affair, he talks about how they have an importance in the whole war as well. He also refers to the respect that he has for Benjamin Talmadge and displays it through his letter. In the end of the letter, Washington discusses toward Ben Talmadge how he must communicate with the French leader because said French leader speaks no English. Because of this, Washington essentially puts the entire campaign in New York and the Franco-American alliance on the shoulders of Ben Talmadge, who is the man who serves as communicator in the situation. Despite its lack of presence in the public eye today, the culprit spying represented the core motives of the American Revolution and the strength of the people's desire to break from Great Britain. As Americans, we owe all we have to Washington's spies and the efforts they made to turn a weak revolt into a revolution that would forever change the modern world. Participating in... Into New York City. Now I have it. Yeah, then my captain. Now what, Lieutenant Colonel? I was only laughing at you, idiot. Stop! Yay! That's it! See one, baby! Bro then rides 110 miles to Setauket. He drops the letter off in a prearranged drop box for Abraham Woodhull. Woodhull then picks up the letter, adds his own information. Tell me. Don't stop for that. He's gonna cut this. Believing! Just hold it to the Alright, so that is operation, that's nothing. <laughs> Candlelight, shut up, shut three up. Hey, dudes shut up. in a shut the shed. See me in the background. I oh. will park a bayonet in your ass. Sit down. Get, get your ass to Mars, boy. So all these people were helpful in gaining independence. Gaining intelligence! Something I lack. This is the conversation. Let me educate you, lamp sitting in the distance. Okay. Bring the occupant. That didn't last very long. Tea's in the harbor, why would I be holding it? <laughs> Play some pavement. Got us in the Mr. P move. How about- Oh, Mr. P. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this. Get on my level. I just became a historian in 12 hours. Call my phone. Woo!